today on Steampunk Minecraft, The Gold Factory. Today we're gonna do something that every man wishes he could do. We are gonna conjure gold out of thin air. Well, actually, we're gonna use a combination of crushing wheels, blaze burners, and clay, but you get the idea. We're making gold. You wanna play mod packs with friends, but you can't seem to find a good server. And the free ones? With the big mod packs these days, free servers are just too laggy. Luckily for you, there's Bisect Hosting. They host my server, and with plenty of affordable options, they can host your server too. And the best part is, they support almost every mod pack. Use code Double Sal at checkout for 25% off your first order. Bisect Hosting, a great site for great servers. I like gold. I mean, what's not to like? It's shiny, it's worth a lot of money. And yes, I will admit that before the nether update, it was kind of useless aside from making golden apples. But one thing has always remained the same. Gold has always been used to make a statement. This is just a simple fact. One that's been proven time and time again, dating all the way back to the good old days when one would build a simple house made out of golden blocks. They were ugly, but admit it, you all built one. And you chose to do that not because the material could be turned into some super armor like today, no. You simply chose gold, cause it was gold. It totally wasn't because of that one guy who called gold but- You know what? No. Some things need to stay in the past. If it wasn't clear enough by the title or my one minute rant, then yes, today we are making a gold factory. Gold farm? Call it whatever you want, we're making gold out of thin air. Let's go. Now where does one put such a building? How about in that pristine, natural habitat of a jungle that's conveniently located right across the river? Now I will acknowledge that we have a perfectly flat plain right in front of the cake factory, but that is waterfront property. I can't lower its property value by obscuring the view. So instead, I'm gonna cross the river, tear down a bunch of trees, evict a bunch of animals, and build my gold factory. But before I do that, we need a way to get across. So it's time to build a bridge. I decided to keep this one simple. Nothing too fancy, just a nice little path of slabs across the water. With the help of my chainsaw, clearing out the trees was a breeze. The terrain was a little uneven, so I had to terraform a little by filling in the holes with dirt. For the more heavy duty terraforming, I relied on my trust power drill. You know, it may not look like it, but these simple tools make these menial tasks so fun. With the boring terraforming out of the way, I decided to add a few more details to my bridge. I didn't want to go too overboard with the bridge design, so I decided to keep it simple. Stone arches, light posts to illuminate it, this was the ideal bridge. And now, for the last of the prep work, building the foundation. I love getting the most out of my materials, so I cut up a bunch of stone and cobblestone into slabs and placed them down. With the foundation laid, all I had to do was reinforce the walls that faced the river. I wanted them to match the design I had on the other side, a mix of cobblestone and cobblestone bricks. Hopefully, if we keep building along the river, we will have a proper canal. But that is far into the future. Right now, I just have to finish this wall because there were more pressing matters to attend to. More golden opportunities? I put down the traditional trapdoors to act as guardrails, and like that, the wall was done. Now, time for the fun part. What does a gold factory even look like? More importantly, how does a gold factory even work? Well, I do know one thing. It requires crushing wheels. Lots and lots of crushing wheels. I'm not kidding. This is probably the one machine in this world that has the most crushing wheels. Why? Well, we'll get into that later. But until then, let's move on. Now these wheels, they're gonna need power, and this simple steam engine's not gonna cut it. See, up until now, we've been powering steam engines with water and campfires to generate heat. But the heat isn't intense enough to generate the force we need to rotate all those wheels. So, we're gonna have to turn to an alternative source for power. We're gonna turn to lava. Thankfully, we do have a source of lava generation. It's just across the river. So, we're gonna have to build a pipeline. I went to the workshop to turn some copper into pipes. When the pipes were crafted, I used some of them to make pumps, and then after that I made my way to the lava room to see how I was gonna make this work. Well, for starters, I was gonna have to create a big hole in the wall. It wasn't gonna look nice, but sacrifices have to be made in the name of progress. After that, I began placing the pipes, doing my best to conceal them in the hillside. This was gonna be an underwater pipeline. 
If it was above the water, well, that just looks bad and it was gonna block the way for any future boating projects we may have. Now that I had gotten the pipe on the other side, it was time to clear some space for the engine. Now, my main goal for this engine was to make it automatic. Up until now, we were powering steam engines with campfires and water wheels. But, like I said before, the campfires don't produce enough heat for the power that we need. But lava does, only if you put it in a blaze burner. So we're gonna have a lava bucket going in and out of a deployer, which should place the lava into the blaze burner for us, making an infinite loop of power. But first we have to get the lava here. So I activated the pumps and the lava started flowing from the farm to the gold factory. With the lava powering the engines, it was finally time to build the machine that would generate all of our gold. We've built a lot of things in this world, but this one is probably going to be the one with the most steps, because to make gold, well, think of it this way, we are turning cobblestone into gold nuggets. There's just a lot of stuff in between so that we can get there. Around the halfway point when I was constructing this thing, I was beginning to start regretting that I didn't design it in the creative world first, because there was a lot of trial and error with this machine, but in the end, it was 100% worth it. All we had to do now was to build a beautiful exterior shell to cover up all these components. Now I'll ask again, what exactly does a gold factory look like? Well, I'll tell you one thing. This design was going to be far more ornate than anything we've built yet. You see, it was a factory, but I didn't want it to look like a factory. Truth be told, I wanted this area, this side of the river to represent wealth, power, opulence, the finer concepts associated with gold. So instead of making it look like a factory, I was gonna make it look like it was part of a palace. I started off with the usual granite and brick foundations, and eventually I incorporated that trusty acacia wood that we love using in these builds. I also incorporated these more ornate windows, which kind of resemble those in the original 100 Days world. Consider the construction of this building a return to finer times. And of course, every great building has a tower. Well, not every great building, but most of them. There it is, friends. In all of its glory, the Gold Factory. When you compare it to other buildings like the Cake Factory, well, <laughs> there is no comparison. I even threw in some gold blocks just to emphasize that this place is where the money is made. And as for the inside, well, you know what? Let me give you a tour and show you how the machine works. All right, so all those crushing wheels, well, that's what they're for, to crush cobblestone and turn it into gravel. Cobblestone that comes from our fabulous cobblestone generator. Thanks to the power of the steam engine, the factory was producing lots of cobblestone, all of which was grounded up into gravel and then once again grounded up into sand. But when you crush gravel, you do get more than just sand. You also have a chance of generating flint as well as clay. But the fact is, we only need the sand. Which leads to the question, how do we sort the rest of the items? The sand is filtered away from the rest of the items. What remains are the flint and the clay, which continue to proceed down the belt. The flint and the clay continue to move along the line until they get to a series of sorting funnels, which separates the two. And once they're sorted, the clay goes into a chest, while the flint, the flint is disposed of in a little lava pool down below. You see, we have way too much flint and I have no use for it, at least for now. As for the sand, like I said before, it's able to phase right through the belt down to the lower levels. This is accomplished thanks to chutes which are right underneath the belt. The next step involves washing the sand with water. With the help of an encased fan, there is a small chance that the sand will drop clay, which is exactly what we need. The sand comes out in stacks of 64 onto the depot where it's met by the blast of water coming from the mechanical fan. Once it's washed, it will leave clay, which is then put down on the lower assembly line where it awaits the next step, that being pressed into a block by a mechanical press. Now there is a reason why we need to press the clay into a block. You see, it's only in block form that you can turn the clay into hardened clay. And to accomplish that, we're gonna have to have the clay block go over the belt where they're gonna sit over an encased fan. The fan is gonna blow hot air from the lava that's right above it, and it's gonna bake the clay into hardened clay. Once the clay is baked, it's gonna proceed down the line into another series of chutes where there is an encased fan that will elevate the blocks up to a higher level. Upon the second level, the hardened clay is ready for the next step. It needs to be crushed into red sand. The clay comes out of the chutes, goes down the conveyor belt, and it enters into a pair of crushing wheels. The crushing wheels ground up the blocks into red sand, which is exactly what we need because to get the gold, we have to wash the red sand with water. When the sand is washed with water, there is a 12% chance that it will drop three gold nuggets. 
Once a gold nugget is produced, it goes into a chest where the tally on the board is once again raised to reflect the number in the chest. And there you have it! That is how we make gold out of thin air. It is a pretty complicated machine, and no doubt it has a lot of steps. But the end result is definitely worth it. And the blaze burner engine? It is a marvel. And there it is across the river, just sitting there gloriously. Now, I do have a problem, that being that there needs to be another one right next to it. I mean, I just love symmetry. I scanned the building, grabbed a schematic cannon, and started constructing the next one. Now, this one didn't have to produce gold, but like I said before, it just looked kind of weird having one on the right and not one on the left. It took some time, but eventually the twin buildings were finally together. It was now time to admire my work. These were definitely some of the more detailed buildings in this world, and I decided that this side of the river was going to be more, uh, like I said, opulent, more grand. What's another word? Palatial? I don't know. But this was going to be the fancy side of town, while the other side was going to be left for the more, you know, industrial, factory-type buildings. Here, we were going to produce fine goods. Speaking of producing fine goods, it was finally time to have a little fun with some of the gold we had already made. Now the really cool thing about this mod pack is that you can do a lot of cool stuff with gold, like making this massive gold boiler. It just looks like a giant coin. The question is, what can we do with such a unique looking block? Hmm. Well, I may have a couple of ideas. I began crafting different blocks, trying to figure out how I wanted to use this item. But time and time again, there was one idea that just kept flying around my brain. A throne. A golden throne. Like I said before, gold has always been used to make a statement. And what better statement to make than by sitting on a golden throne showing off your wealth? But we're not going to stop there. What about gold accessories? I'm talking about golden armor. Only in this mod pack, the helmet looks like a crown. Yes, with this golden crown and this golden throne, I definitely think I'm getting the message across. And there are also some other small golden accessories like these golden gloves. And of course, how can you possibly forget about the golden necklace? And here I am with a golden setup that even Midas would envy. Golden throne, golden armor, golden sword? It doesn't get any better than this. Uh, unless you like diamond, but eh. Everything was going so well until I noticed one small thing. And this was... Not so small, actually. I think I'm downplaying how much of a problem this was. You see, we have the pair of buildings here, and well, something looked a little off, so I had to be sure I started counting the spaces between the buildings with blocks. Okay, that one is fine. What is that, like five of them? Okay, and I'm going to have to count the other one. I wonder what that one is going to be. It better be even worst case scenario. It's slightly off by a block. And this one was off by two blocks. Not one two blocks the entire setup was ruined the buildings were not evenly spaced apart it's something i'm gonna have to correct later but yeah that is definitely like a rock in my shoe but aside from that at least they did their job that's gonna wrap it up for today's video we accomplished a lot a gold factory a beautiful building to cover it all this was a really fun episode to make, so I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, and if you want this build, be sure to check out my Patreon, link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Double Sal, I'll see you next time.